Hello, Indigenous Prism Squad. Welcome back for another episode of our special series entitled Tales of Indigenous. I'm your host, Mei Han, for today's episode on January 25th, 2021. Heroic Indigenous poet, Rita Zhou. Today's episode highlights the life and achievements of my personal Indigenous hero, the Mi'kmaq poet, Rita Zhou. Tune in to learn more about Rita Joe's life and how she challenged the colonialist perspectives and the accurate representations. I hope you agree to my stance after this episode, so let's get started. Heroes, who are they? Heroes and heroines are commonly portrayed as exceptional humans who, when faced with challenging situations, always manage to solve them and save the day. In actuality, heroic traits can be found in everyday people. Some might identify a hero as someone who is accomplished, high-achieving, and courageous. A real-life example of a hero is the well-known Mi'kmaq poet Rita Joe. Rita Joe is named a hero for overcoming adversity and doing good for others. She serves as a role model for people in and outside her community. Rita Joe was born on March 15, 1932 into a family of six living on the Wilcockmark First Nation Reserve in Nova Scotia. The Mi'kmaq poet's career rise was meteoric, and she had numerous achievements under her belt. After being the first Mi'kmaq person honored for poetry by the Nova Scotia Writers' Confederation in 1978, she became the first Mi'kmaq woman to receive the Order of Canada in 1990. Rita Joe's life was not always sunshine and rainbows. She was orphaned at the age five, passed from one foster home to the other, spent four years at the Shubinakari Indian Residential School, gave birth to eight children, and lived to see her great-grandchildren. Rita Jo is also the author of six books of poetry and one autobiography. On March 20th, 2007, the Mi'kmaq poet Rita Jo passed away in Cape Breton, Australia, at the age of 75. Her daughter found a poem still in her typewriter. The beauty of the soul shines out when a man bears with composure one heavy mischance after another, not because he does not feel them, but because he is a man of high and heroic temper," said the Greek philosopher Aristotle. If there is no adversity, there is no growth. Despite the fact that the school attempted to take away Rita Joe's language and culture, she chose to focus on the positive experiences and to be grateful for the opportunities she has had. After years of residential schooling, Rita had to relearn her native language. She was not afraid of stepping outside of her comfort zone to talk with people from her own tribe and other Mi'kmaq speakers. After Rita lost both of her parents at a young age, she managed to find her own way out of the grief and isolation. After facing a series of unfortunate events, Rita Jo was able to overcome adversity and become a person of heroic temperament. This is one of the reasons why I consider Rita Jo a hero. Rita Jo contributed to Canadian society through her effort to challenge colonial views and inaccurate representations. Rita Jo once claimed, I was only a housewife with a dream to bring laughter to the sad eyes of my people. Indigenous people for a long time have been depicted in the past as bad and savage people. Jo wrote about a positive image of her people, the Mi'kmaq, to counter the negative image people have of the indigenous people. Rita Jo did not like seeing her people portrayed in the negative light. So she wanted to share that positive and loving image of the indigenous people through her work. Rita Jo's work had an impact because it addresses the lost generation of indigenous people in Canada, whose stories were mostly untold. Rita Jo's story is a generational tale of the indigenous people growing up in the 1940s and 1950s. Rita Jo's work depicts the lost generation in a human light in an impactful manner. Her work helps to shape a more accurate picture of indigenous people in Canada. On top of that, Rita Jo's writing demonstrates the indigenous worldview of relationships. And that feeling comfortable is measured by the quality of relationships you have with people. In a poem found in Poems of Rita Jo, 
happy dreams, Rita wrote, when we sing loving words, loving words to everyone. Then the words come alive and we feel good. And the song in our hearts we give away. The positive images of indigenous people were put out by Rita Cho by gentle persuasion. And that had more effect than a blockhead. Rita Cho's aim was, was to be a fine writer and to take all the pain and transform it through her writing to convert it into something that gave her people and her stories an honored place. Rita Jo's poems gently presented the indigenous people's experience within Canada. She advocates love and understanding between people, reflecting both pain and hope. Her philosophy has been to find beauty in every place or circumstance to keep up an upbeat attitude about life. As well as advocating for indigenous culture, she also advocated the existence of diversity in harmony. Among all of her great work, I was most inspired by her poem, I Lost My Walk. This work is deeply personal to Joe. It is the reflection of her experiences at the Shubinakabi Indian Residential School and how she considers the need for change. In the poem, I Lost My Walk, I realize how diversity can and does exist in harmony. Rita Jo said after receiving a National Aboriginal Achievement Award in 1997 that no matter from what circumstances you come from and no matter from what culture, everybody can do this. Rita Jo was not only an ambassador for Native arts and culture, but she was also a role model for so many others throughout the U.S. and Canada. Rita Jo is truly a hero in the community, as I see it. Rita Jo was an adversity overcomer, a culture preserver, a poet, an advocate, and a true cultural hero. She fights stereotypes, misrepresentation, and biases to build bridges between different people. First of all, Rita Jo's style of writing and techniques were admirable, but what I found the most inspiring was her ability to forgive and to look at things from a broad perspective. Being able to translate the pain she had suffered into something that contributed to hope and optimism. And but not only sharing her, her stories at such an early stage were inspiring. The indigenous trickster, Nana Bush, appeals to people's sense of humor. The wits of Nana Bush helps to restore family relations this helps to take a positive step towards reconciliation. Rita Jo's work also helps to reconcile. Her writing appeals to readers with its calm and optimistic tone, as well as the hope for indigenous communities. The positive portrayal of indigenous people in Rita Jo's work allows people to have an accurate image of themselves. By normalizing the image of the indigenous people being kind, accepting, and open-minded, the new generation, both indigenous and non-indigenous, will have a chance to embrace the indigenous culture and realize that indigenous cultures are not any less than any other cultures. Rita Jo was an inspiring Canadian indigenous poet and a true cultural hero. I hope you find her story as fascinating as I do I hope you have learned more about Rita Jo and see eye to eye with me. That's all for today's episode on Indigenous Prism. Hopefully, you'll check out some of Rita Jo's amazing work. I'll link some down in the description box below. I am Mei Han, the host of today's episode. Thank you for listening. I hope you share your thoughts with me and I invite you to tune in next week when we will further discuss the impact of Indigenous heroes have on the Canadian society. Bye.